Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It sounds like I'm back on D block at SCI Forest sometimes. Mr. Speaker, first of all, I want to thank the members of this House and the leadership team, the appropriations team. This session is markedly different from what it was last session. We've been actively involved. We're digging. We're finding things that uh, needed to be found, unearthing a lot of problems in fraud, waste, and abuse, uh, misuse and mishandling of state funds. And for that, I'm very grateful. I think it's because of that that the administration has awakened to the fact that there is still a lot to be found and a lot to be corrected in the way the state manages its money. But Mr. Speaker, again, this House was responsible in sending the vehicle over to the Senate six weeks ago. Six weeks ago. And last night, we got the response. The problem is, constitutionally, we have to have both the spending and we also have to show the means by which we're going to pay for it. That part of the bill did not, or the uh, process did not come back to us. What they did do was the 6% cut that we did to the legislature, they've turned into a 6.5% increase for the Senate and a 6% for us, or 2.5% two and a, two and a for us. And though I appreciate the fact that the governor has uh, agreed to taking a cut in his operational budget for the governor's office, I still believe that we should be making that kind of a responsible uh, budget as well. Mr. Speaker, I'm grateful that we've restored the money to our counties for our schools and our courts. But due to the shifting of funds in the proposed merger of health and human services, without clear delineation of how that money is to be allocated, I have concerns with how it will impact our county governments, especially in the human services realm. This GA bill may end up being a good deal if we can find a responsible way to pay for it. That is, if we know we have a balanced budget, a constitutionally balanced budget. There is no way, at this point at least, if we know that we have the means to do that. The gentlelady from Chester County indicated that one possibility would be a severance tax. Wall Street Journal here uh, just a couple days ago on the 27th headline, shale produces oil, so why doesn't it produce cash too? The margins right now are so low and the impositions that we do on the gas industry are making the returns such that property taxes are going to end up going up because it's going to be a pass-through and the second largest line item in any local government behind their uh, human services or their human cost for their personnel happens to be utilities. So your electricity, your gas for heating, all of that is going up and it's going to drive property taxes up if we do a severance tax. But if we're going to start looking at severance taxes, let's look at the industries in Pennsylvania that are uh, making 20 percent uh, margins, like the pharmaceutical industries. How does that sound? If you want to hurt the, my industry, the, the industry in my area, let's spread that pain. Mr. Speaker, I just want to go back. We need to have from the Senate the indication of how much, how we are going to pay for this. and. Uh, for that reason, I'm a no at this time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.